my $150,000 passport. One year later, it's been exactly one year since I got the St. Kitts and Nevis passport. I've traveled to over 15 countries around the world, all over Europe, Asia, the Middle East. I even went all the way down to Australia with this passport. And I'll tell you exactly what it's been like to hold a passport from the Caribbean by investment. If you're thinking about getting a second passport, renounce your US citizenship, renounce another citizenship, or just have it as a second option. Or maybe your current passport doesn't allow you to travel to many places. You can get a second one and travel to other countries. I've also opened bank accounts on this passport. And yesterday I was here at the Dubai bank and one person behind me was opening up a bank account with the St. Kitts passport. So the St. Kitts passport overall, it isn't prejudiced. People have no opinion on it. Most people around the world in immigration, in banking, they don't even know that it's a real country. They've seen the passport for the first time. They always say, wow, it's so beautiful, has so many colors, so many fish inside. It has these tropical colors, tropical fish, some birds and so on. They always compliment the passport and they say, oh, I think I saw this maybe one month ago, two months ago from a Russian guy or something. So they really don't know about this country. They don't think, oh, it's a terrible country. This person bought this passport. I've seen some people say that if you show up to a bank or if you go to a crypto exchange or if you go to an immigration official with a St. Kitts passport, they're gonna know that you bought it and they're gonna be prejudiced against you. No, that has not been my experience at all. Most people, they check the passport, they see if it looks like you, they type in their system, St. Kitts and Nevis, they see, oh, you have 30 days visa free, 90 days visa free. Okay, go ahead and enter the country. In Singapore, one of the countries that gives a lot of problems at the border, if you're a country that has 30 days or sometimes they have transit of five or seven days, they ask you a lot of questions. They ask how long you're staying in Singapore, where exactly are you staying, what are you doing in Singapore? They usually have this procedure. For me, it was just great, what's your country? Okay, let me check in the system. 30 days, awesome, welcome to Singapore. Just remember to leave before the 30 days are over. And that's been my experience all over the world. So having this kind of passport, sure, it doesn't give you access to Canada or the United States or Australia, but you can always get a visa. And the visa process to Australia specifically was horrible. It's about 20 steps of information. You need to completely show everything about you, your finances, step-by-step -step plans of what you're doing in the country. You need to show everything about you and what you plan to do in Australia, literally on a day-by-day -day basis. If you have a contact or friend or something in Australia or a lawyer in Australia, that helps a lot so you can put them as the contact person for your case. But I don't think most people are going to Australia when they're to meet accountants, to meet Mark, to make some videos about Australia and Australians leaving the country. So unless you're looking to travel to Australia, New Zealand, US, Canada, the rest of the world is accessible. And their due diligence process for this passport is getting harder and harder. They know they need to keep their relationship with Europe, with the US, with Canada. We're trying to get visa-free travel again because we had it before, we lost it, we're trying to get it again. And the due diligence process is extremely tight. It's not like Vanuatu, where they used to approve everybody in two or three days. We're talking about six, seven months of constantly checking who you are, your past, your family. Do you have a criminal record all over the world? They do a world check and make sure that you're a legitimate investor to get this passport. Do you think having a second passport in this day and age is important or is it just a waste of money? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This year, 2022, we actually got four new countries visa-free. They're not the most awesome places. I think two or three of them are in Central Africa. So sure, not countries that you might want to go to, but the passport is getting better over time. At $150,000, the St. Kitts passport, I see it as correctly priced. Yes, you have St. Lucia, Dominica, which are way cheaper at $100,000. But if you wanna pay a premium just to have a bit better reputation. I wouldn't even say better reputation than Dominica. They're both as aggressive in visa-free travel. They're both as aggressive in getting great partnerships with other countries around the world. Maybe you wanna pay a premium to have a tax-free country as your citizenship because St. Kitts is tax-free, no personal income tax, no capital gains tax, crypto-friendly. I've heard from many people, Dominica, you do pay taxes. So if you wanna live in the place where you have citizenship, although most people are not living in St. Kitts, I haven't even been to St. Kitts, you don't even need to go there and you can transfer money 
from anywhere in the world to go through the process. It'll take you six, seven months. Now I've heard it's taking longer just because there's many people applying for these programs. So if it takes eight to nine months, don't sue me. It should take around six to seven. It's taken now eight or nine. So it can take all the way up to that. I've heard some people that did Dominica have taken 10 to 11 months in the approval process just because so many people are applying for these passports. In my opinion, I think it's absolutely beautiful that you can choose the country that you're a citizen of. And in this day and age of so many restrictions, regulations, countries locking you in their borders, countries taxing you all over the world, Australia proposing that they're going to tax you the next three years after you leave the country, Canada proposing citizenship based taxation, the US with their new and constant regulations on citizens. It is the best time in history to get a second passport. Two passports now are one passport before. It is the new normal to have two passports just to be protected at least. So if 150 grand, 100 grand isn't a huge deal for you, then I definitely recommend to get one of these passports and you will not be prejudiced. You won't have problems at the bank. You won't have problems with Binance, nothing, because they don't care. Most people don't know about this country and most people think, cool, the password looks great, great, here you go, here's your stamp. Here's your bank account. Here's your information. Have a great day. If you want to know all the options for citizenship by investment so that you can also get a second passport by buying it, by investing into a country, then check out the video right here on the 10 countries that offer their citizenship by investment and all the options you have available to you right now. Definitely check them out right here.